All right, welcome to SF Cryptocurrency Devs Interviews. My name is Tarek Lewis. I'm a co-organizer of SF Cryptocurrency Devs. And tonight, July 11th, I have with me Mark Nadal from GunDB. Hello, Mark. Thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it. It is a pleasure. You just completed about an entire two-hour nonstop presentation for us. Um, and I want to say thank you and start off with um, who are you and how did you get involved in cryptocurrencies? Yeah, so I'm Mark Nadal. I, as you said already in terms of names, but I've been working on distributed systems for probably the last eight years, 2000, late 2009, 2010. And I was using master-slave databases at that point, but I realized, oh, those don't really scale up. So I wound up having to ditch the project that I was actually interested in building and go down the rabbit hole and solve building a decentralized database. And when you go down that rabbit hole, you discover there's all these really rich, incredible algorithms that can be used to solve and scale up peer-to-peer uh, -peer systems. And that's now kind of catching eight years uh, back up. Um, we can actually apply these to cryptocurrencies and blockchains or, or unblock, well, maybe that's too controversial of a statement, right. but <laughs> we can apply better peer-to-peer -peer algorithms to, right. to have better performance. So you would say you're a distributed, in, a distributed computing engineer or a distributed database engineer? My heart lies with math logic right. and philosophy. Okay. Uh, however, I didn't really like the academic world. Yeah. So I realized if I were to drop out of school and right. try to be a rogue mathematician, nobody's going to pay me. Right. But I realized I could take those mathematical ideas and learn how to code, implement them, and I got into startup life that awesome. route. And once you take these really crazy mathematical concepts and actually have them implemented in real life and yep. real code that yep. people are using today, yep. suddenly people are, are wowed and impressed by like, wow, like theoretical math when actually applied right. changes the game. So tell me about the RAD project. What is that and yes. what's, that, what's that piece? So the Radix storage engine right. is a high performance storage engine. So a lot of, we talk about GUN as being a database, but, mm -hmm. but we have adapters that yep. you can connect to Amazon S3, to IPFS, to a storage engine. Yep. And the Radix storage engine um, is specifically designed to make peer-to-peer -peer storage, regardless of whether it's on IPFS or Amazon yeah. S3, yeah. Uh, be very scalable in terms of query time. Okay. And that's because Radix trees have a really nice O1 lookup time on them awesome. relative to the total data set versus um, the, obviously the Radix tree has a particular right. depth. And you have a cryptocurrency as well. Yes. What so is that? That is called Axe, and we have had this big problem that uh, the 8.4 thousand developers that have come through our community yep. are building these really cool apps. But then in order to make sure that they actually do peer-to-peer -peer data sync, they have to set up these backup servers that, right. because WebRTC sucks. Right. And a bunch of people were like, hey, um, you know, Firebase is a hosted database as a service. Can, can we just point, you know, our, our apps to your servers? And yeah. it's like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to manage a cluster myself. And then it dawned on me, wait a second. If, if we create a decentralized Firebase, a decentralized Heroku, a decentralized sure. database as a service, sure. then everybody can have fun and profit. So that's your idea, decentralized database as a service. Yes. Paid for with? Axe tokens, which is an incentive structure around bandwidth, because bandwidth winds up being one of the hardest um, resources. And that's how we get proof of propagation. Yes. So what's proof of propagation again? Proof of propagation is just making sure that, well, it's a little bit hard because in the traditional world, if I have my cell phone and I pick up my cell phone and I call my mom, I expect my phone's going, my mom's going to pick up. Yep. But if we move into a decentralized world where we don't have a trusted middleman, have no idea. we don't necessarily have the guarantee sure. that they are going to pick up. So we need a cryptographic guarantee that they did indeed receive that data. So my that way, mom wants to get my call. Yes. <laughs> so that way mom is happy seeing photos of the grandchildren right. or the girlfriend or whatever it is. Right. And not some random stranger. <laughs> Most of cryptocurrencies are around payments and around transactions, but you seem to be looking at it around data and communication. Is that the clear understanding of the difference in your approach versus others? Yes. So all machines need to do three things fundamentally. Storage, computation, and bandwidth. Yep. Those three things require electricity. So that's where kind of Bitcoin makes sense from an electricity side right. and from a finance side. But um, each one of these three things have different trade-offs from an engineering side. So, you know, storage might be high volume, low um, latency, but uh, sorry, high latency, while bandwidth needs to be, you know, high throughput, low latency. Yep. So you have to use different cryptographic methods for that. And yep. so it's better to um, have, there's way too many cryptocurrencies out there. I think there's basically should only be 
three mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And then Bitcoin is the mother cryptocurrency sure. that then So you're a Bitcoin pay. maximalist? Yeah, I, I'd have to be careful with the connotation of the invitation. <laughs> Don't worry, not being recorded. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what's your next milestone for Rad X? Yes. And how can people get involved? So if they hit up our website, gun.eco, go over to the GitHub page, start stealing all of our code and using it, having fun with it. Yeah. It's MIT's Lib Apache 2 license. Everything we do is very openly licensed. Um, then once you've been using it and you're building cool stuff where you're finding bugs or issues, yeah. jump into the chat room, yeah. tell us, complain about the problem, and yeah. then make a pull request. And that will quickly move us into a setting where like, hey, this person's doing some pretty valuable work. We should just hire them full time and have them on board at uh, the company. There you go. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. And that was GunDB, uh, Radix project, and a lot of others. Um, I remember the website again is gun.eco. Gun.eco. G-U-N dot E-C-O. All right, see you guys next time. Thanks.